Hey guys, Matthew here, and welcome back to another episode of Matthew Lane's The Tech Name Man. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make a remote app and desktop connection server that allows you to use work resources, such as uh, programs, such as, you know, like Arduino, KeyPass, whatever programs uh, suit your business, then you're able to use it. Now, at my business, we have quite a few apps. We use a lot of AutoCAD, but also a lot of scanning, and uh, the Zen Center and vSphere Client are for the IT team. Uh, Putty as well is used for us. Um, I'm not sure if you call it Putty, Putty, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Firefox is for if people are browsing on a tablet and they need to use the local intranet. Uh, we have it, our own uh, um, web server inside, and that's how they access it. So in this episode, I'm actually going to show you how to download it. And I'm not sure if my recording is going to go very well. Um, I have been having quite a few issues with downloading recently. So I'll give you an example of how this works. So if I wanted to open up uh, Putty, for instance, I'll open the file. Uh, I'll connect in like this. Um, and then what it should do is it will say I'm now connected to the server. And I can now use a remote app. As you can see here, it's got that little remote app symbol there, which indicates that it is a uh, on a remote server and not locally. Now, I'm also going to give you a demonstration on another machine, but I'm not sure if this is going to... Yes, it, it's finally decided to be nice. This is a Windows 8 virtual machine that I've literally just uh, deployed, um, and it actually seems to be working pretty well. Uh, there are some issues with this that I have discovered. Um, it just, as you can see here, this has a security issue. And the reason for that is because I don't have a valid SL, uh, SSL uh, certificate um, and you have to purchase one. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not the best when it comes to doing the SLL certificate, so I'm doing a little bit of research on that as we speak. Um, as well as that, um, this is probably not going to work, so I might actually just suspend that for now. Okay, that will work. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to um, set it up using Server 2012 R2, uh, using, uh, yeah, as I said, Server 2012 R2, using um, the inbuilt services, because there's no additional software required, unless, of course, you're using um, your work resources. Like, in my case, all of this software over here had to be installed via, um, that had to be installed uh, on the server. So, Apps1 is the server name, I've called it, and on that server, I have to run a... Um, Excuse me, I'm losing my breath here. Um, on Apps 1, it has to have all of this software required in order for it to work, apart from Calculator and Paint, because those are pre-installed apps already. Um, the next thing that I have to do is I'm going to need to quickly get a Server 2012 R2 virtual machine up and running. Fortunately, I have got that set up. Now, some requirements that we are going to need for this is we are definitely going to be needing this server to be on an Active Directory domain. As you can see, I've got my... Um, remote server up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually shut these virtual machines down because none of them are required at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to shut them all down. Um, I don't know why I selected the Active Directory client. That was for a project I was doing. Um, so what we need to do is because the Active Directory domain is on my uh, on my local network, it's a requirement. Okay, this would have just said, I've, yeah, it's, as you can see, it's shutting down now. Um, it's a requirement that I must go ahead and have this connected to a domain. So I have to keep this in my local network. So we're gonna see a ton of computers on the network. Theoretically, what I would like to do is have this inside a virtual environment, but unfortunately, due to, this, due to the fact that you do require a domain controller for this to run, it is, uh, I have to go ahead and use my local area network for it. Uh, in a real life scenario though, I would have a system set up where I would have a virtual network where it's all uh, isolated from my uh, home network and it's just an internal network. Um, as you can see here, half the servers are now shutting down, which is what we want. Um, they will take some time. Uh, the server 2012R2 I'm going to use for this demonstration. I'm not planning to uh, do anything else with it apart from putting remote apps on it. I'm just going to go ahead quickly and I'm going to create a snapshot of this VM. So we're going to do take a snapshot and I'm going to call this uh, base image. Now, I'm not sure how much storage I've got on my server. So this potentially uh, might not have enough storage to create a snapshot. I don't know. Um, but with virtual machines, it's really fun to do. Um, so once we've got our... Um, actually, I actually don't want to force shut that down. Beautiful. As you can see, we've created a snapshot. And now if I go into my 
snapshots, we have our base image. We're now going to turn the virtual machine on and I'm going to log in. Now, I don't actually know if I have connected this, uh, if this has actually been pre-installed or what. Um, so, oh crud, I've got to reboot that. Yes, and eject that CD. Um, whoops, I completely forgot to do that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I just want to, e that should eject. Beautiful. And as you can see, uh, it should boot to, yeah, as I thought, I did install Server 2012 R2 on this machine. Now this is very much compatible with uh, Server 2012. The reason I like using Server 2012 R2 is it's more compatible, um, but also just with my use, I've actually liked it a lot more. Um, as well as that, you'll see my cursor has just enlarged. Uh, don't know what that is with OBS, but it's actually a tiny little, um, it's a tiny, tiny little dot on my screen. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna look. There we go, beautiful. As you can now see, it's no longer a dot, it's a mouse. And that's what I like about that one. Now, I'm not sure how long this tutorial is going to go for, but hopefully uh, it shouldn't go too long. Okay, this is not connected to the domain. That is absolutely fine. So that's the first thing we're going to need to do. Is first thing we're going to need to do is administer this to the domain, and then we'll log in with the administrator account before we add the roles. Now, the reason we do this is because um, Active Directory plays a major part in the remote app services. It's a requirement that we use... Um, our domain and that way that so because I already have a server preset I'm going to create a brand new installation um, so it doesn't see anything um, as you can see this is a, a standard evaluation and that's purely because I'm doing testing I will have some links in the description to help you if uh, with downloading um, drivers and things like that I just want to see what networking this is connected to because that should be connected yes that is connected to the right network um, I want to show you, um, I'll give some links out there, sorry, to show you how to uh, actually install this because there are tons and tons of resources out there on the internet, as well as where you can get yourself a copy of Server 2012 or 2016. There is a really good piece of, uh, a really good website out there called getitontopc.com. I will put that in the link in the description, um, which will uh, give a ton of images out. Now, apparently it's called, um, for some stupid reason, my firewall doesn't allow it. And the reason for it is because apparently it's where you're giving a software out illegally, depending on how you're using it, because half the software that they've got on that site is cracked, which means um, they've pre-activated the software that you would usually have to pay for. Um, so the reason we do that is that way uh, we don't have any issues. Uh, they they uh, try to do the best they can to stop people from, you know, putting tons and tons of stuff on there to try and, you know, pre-crack it or anything like that. So what we're going to do is first off, we're going to give this computer a name. We're going to put it on the domain, enable remote desktop and give it a static IP address. That's the first four things I would do whenever I install server 2012 R2. So I'm going to go up to WinLB95GNONS, whatever that is. Uh, so we're going to do some things, things like that. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click change. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to just call it server one because I can't, uh, because I don't feel like anything else, and make sure there's a hyphen there, you idiot. Um, and I'm going to put in my domain controller, which is home.local. And this, the reason I like a domain is so I can actually experiment all the time and learn how to use this system very well. Now, hopefully, it should have seen it. Um, now, I've been told at my... Uh, workplace practices that you probably should never ever use an administrator account. Okay, that's connected to the domain. Um, it's apparently bad if you connect, uh, sorry, use an administrator password because um, my teacher was telling me a story um, where someone managed to get an admin password and managed to stuff up some settings. And fortunately, because they had the backup administrator account, um, they were able to go ahead and stop them from doing stupid things um so they did manage to fix it in the end but they used the main administrator account which i'm using so i think it's more as a fail safe um and so that's why i think they use it now i'm going to give this one 136 um subnet mask is 255 255 oh if this thing's going to be nice to me 255 255 and then i'm going to put in my default gateway which is this one um then I'm also going to put in the DNS server, which in this case will be the domain controller. And then finally, I'm going to put in Google server uh, because that's how we've got our network configured here. So that's now all static and IP addressed. And as you can see, I'm also going to actually turn off the firewall because the firewall actually does interfere 
with the network. So we're gonna turn all those off and um, we actually have an inbuilt firewall into our system anyway. So there's no need to use that. Okay, so that's now done. We're gonna reboot the server and then we can get into the meat and potatoes. So we're gonna now go ahead and plan that and we'll watch the server reboot. Now, because my Zen server has an SSD in it, uh, it's got two uh, 256 gigabyte SSDs in it. It should be ridiculously quick at rebooting. The server that I'm using has a Core 2 Duo E8500 in it with eight gigs of RAM, um, and it's a pretty decent system. Um, I do hopefully plan to get a big server at some point with like two Xeons in them and 128 gigs of RAM. Um, I'm just trying to get that sorted as we speak. As you can see, it's already boot rebooted. As well as that with virtual machines, there's no need to do too much writing or reading um, because I can't actually remember uh, what the whole reason for it is, but um, with virtual machines, they can be a lot quicker without building a system, uh, without having to do, you know, as much as a computer here. Because nuts and bolts, my main uh, system, which is a HP Pavilion, uh, has an SSD in it and it boots ridiculously quick. With a hard drive though, it was absolutely slow. Um, I feel like Server 2012R2 though, doesn't have to uh, do a lot of checks that Windows um, 7, 8, 10 and all that does. Um, it purely pr probably uses um, its service, it probably uses a lot less services than Windows does. Um, so yes, now we're going to log in as the domain administrator account. Uh, I'm going to now full screen that and I'm no longer going to log in as server one. We're going to now go to home slash administrator. Now I've called my domain home. You can call your domain whatever you want to call it. Um, it has taken me about three years to understand Active Directory and that is a huge thing for me. Uh, to actually get an understanding of what Active Directory is. Um, fortunately now, um, looks like OBS is actually not doing too bad and we've been recording for about 12 and a bit minutes. So we, we're looking good so far for our system. Now, because I've actually created a snapshot, once I've finished this tutorial, well, I, I'm gonna go back to the base image and I'm gonna refer that back. Okay, so now that we have this is all activated, we're going to now go, the server manager will launch and then we finally get to install the app services. Once this is done, you can uh, run this on Mac, Windows, Linux, or a tablet. Um, I've tried them on all, um, and the next episode that's coming up, I'll show you how to actually do that. So today, we're configuring the actual server itself, and then once we've done that, I will show you how to manage it through Linux, Windows, whatever you want to manage it with, and then finally, um, we'll go ahead and um, I'll show you how to actually use it, because for this demonstration, I'm gonna install two programs on there. I'm gonna install um, Google Chrome, and I'm going to install, uh, what's a good program I can install? I'm going to install Chrome and KeePass on there because KeePass is a really important so piece of software that I use. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go now up to Manage. I'm going to click Add Roles and Features. I'm going to now go here. I'm going to go to Remote Desktop Services Installation. This is a huge pr uh, part that you do need to uh, tick. So I'm going to select that, as you can see. I'm going to click Next. Now we've got a lot of things to start talking about. Now, standard deployment is where it deploys to uh, multiple servers, but because I don't want to show this, we're gonna do quick start, which means uh, we're purely gonna be using this server as a brand new server and it's only one server instead of multiple. We're then going to, do the deployment scenario should be one, I believe. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. You wanna either do virtual machine based or session based. Now, because I don't have the uh, capability to do virtual machine based uh, desktop deployment, I'm actually gonna do just session based, which means it's running on the local server itself. Um, with virtual machine based deployment, it will have certain VMs that has certain software on it, and then you log into a VM, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do a session based deployment, which will then use uh, the IIS, uh, ser uh, server role in here. Um, we're going to now select the server, as you can see, server one's been selected. We're then going to click next, and then finally, we're going to confirm, and then we're going to deploy. Now, this does take some time, so I'll be back once it's finished, um, because it actually took about an hour last time that I did it. Um, it shouldn't take too long now, um, depending on how we're going. Now, what we are going to need to do, though, is we are going to need to click restart the destination server uh, automatically if required. That is an absolute must. Now that we've done that, we're going to click deploy, and we're going to have to just sit back, relax, have a nice cup of coffee, which I usually do, and then we're going to uh, come back once this is finished. 
Okay, welcome back. So what's just happened now is the server has had an update, uh, has now um, finished the first part. As you can see, it's now just rebooting um, and then it should come back and then we've got to re-log back in and let it finish again. Um, as I said, this task does take quite some time, so I will be back once this is finished. Okay. So it's going to look a little something like this because apparently you might think, hey, I've just booted it up and it's not going to install. Well, that's usually the case. I have experienced this in the past. So we have to go ahead and actually get the next part done. So add roles and features. Um, in theory, that should have come up and I'm confused why it hasn't. So um, we're going to go back into, um, we're going to click add roles and features and then select the remote desktop services installation. Now, for some stupid reason, it hasn't decided to bring up the install, so we're going to have to do this manually. Uh, usually in the case scenario, it will have the remote desktop services enabled. Um, as you can see, it's installed half the things that we need. We need to install all of them, uh, add features, and apart from the remote desktop virtualization host, otherwise you'll be having problems. Um, so I think that's what we need. We're going to click next and then install. Um, I actually swore at this thing one time because it got uh, I got super frustrated with it. Um, and the reason for it is because it's so detailed. This is like um, networking administrator stuff um, for 20-year-olds. So it's quite difficult to work with. Um, especially for me, the security issue is one of the downsides that I have issues with. Other than that, the installation part of it's fine. The installing apps and publishing apps is fine. Everything else is fine apart from that SLL issue. Um, so, other than that, it's completely fine, and I'm happy with it. So, well, cool. Um, now, we've just finished the installation, uh, which has started on the server, as I've called it, server1.home.local. One, uh, one and as well as that, I should now be able to do this. So, if I now type in server1, I should be able to, yep, as I thought, I should be able to remote in and we'll log in as home slash administrator. And then log in. And as you can see, that should hopefully, this one should now go from there into that. Now, I have two monitors. So what will happen is I won't have OBS on my secondary screen. So I'll have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but as you can see now, I've got my desktop back to remote desktop. Uh, uh, so desktop and remote desktop. Now, hopefully this will load and not be a stubborn pain in the neck. Fortunately, it's not. And boom. Boom. Boom, there we go. Um, so yes, I have two um, I have two displays that I connect to um, purely because I find it way easier to. So I might actually, just for this demonstration though, I'll go up to my uh, display and I'll just use my one monitor here. Um, we'll log in again. Um, and then finally, um, go ahead and uh, log back in so I can see the recording. It's actually quite important that I do see OBS um, with the recording. So it's, yeah, quite important. Um, anyway, it is the Easter weekend. So by the time you guys have seen this, uh, the Easter weekend would be over. So I hope you guys had a lovely Easter weekend. Uh, this is for Australia, obviously, and probably the other people as well. I don't know if you celebrate uh, it in other places. So, oh, well. Now, you'll probably hear music playing in the background because my dad's just started it. So this microphone is so sensitive, it picks up like I'm on the second story and my brother was playing drums and he was on the third um, all right. Okay. So that's now all installed. And as you can see, uh, we should be able to now go into the servers. And as you can see, it's now, uh, installed it. I think we need to now get some things configured. So I'm not sure if the deployment has successfully worked. Um, we do get some issues occasionally time to time. Now this is the RD gateway manager, and I'm not sure if that's actually ready. So we'll just uh, go ahead and hopefully if I refresh that, um, I'm not sure if that's going to actually work or not. Remote desktop services, as you can see, it's online. But for some stupid reason, it does not want to apply the task. So I'm wondering why has it done that? Um, other than that, um, RD manager. That's very weird. Because um, usually what would happen then after I've done it is um, that should activate. So for some weird reason, I find it really weird. So I've done a deployment, I've added the roles and services, and then select remote desktop services installation option, which I've done. So I'm just going to close out of server manager and reopen it. Now, hopefully we should see, here we go. This is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I want to also go into the licensing side of things as well. 
Now, I actually have an inbuilt license server, so I just need to click activate server. Next, uh, automatic connection, and that should activate it. Um, now, the one that I, apps one that I currently use is already activated. Now, you have to put some details in, um, like this, um, and then I have to put in some information, and I will bleep all of this out. As you can see, it's going to activate the licensing server. Um, and now we're going to, obviously, as you can see, it's now activated. We've just got to install our licenses, which is easy enough. And the way it will work is, um, okay, I did not do it that way. I can't remember how I did it. Uh, add to group, here we go. Beautiful. And now if I click OK, there we go. Because it's in a domain, it's already activated and we're OK, it says. So that's the first part. I've now activated it. Yes, here we go. As you can now see, the ad roles and features wizard has finally come. And as you can see, I'm happy with that. And I can just leave it now. Um, this is what should have happened, but it was just so slow. And I was confused why it did that. I think it was purely because I didn't, I had to manually go ahead and install these two roles. Uh, so I'm not sure about that. But once that's done, I'll be right back. Okay, so now as you can see, they've all successfully succeeded. It didn't take too long. And now we can go ahead and log into the server from uh, server1.home.local. So let's do that. So we're going to go to our internet browser. Um, probably we're not going to need, um, we are going to need the HTTPS. Um, and I'm going to type in server1 uh, forward slash rdweb. Now I put in the uh, domain as well, but usually that's not required. I'm going to go advanced, add an exception confirm that now this is purely because I don't have an SLL certificate now this is for a testing subject sorry for testing so I don't need an SLL certificate for this this is just a dirt way dirt, uh, sorry dirt, that, there's that term dirty and dusty or something like that um, for it now anyone that is a um, anyone that is a domain user will have access to it and as you can see here now I have three apps assigned calculator paint and wordpad that's it these are the inbuilt apps that work resources automatically do. Now, I have had some issues in the past where I've had to, um, oh, dogs, in the past where I've had to go ahead and with the quick session connect, it's called, or sorry, the quick session collection, uh, I've had to delete this and redo it. Fortunately, by the sounds of it, it do, uh, by the looks of it, it doesn't seem to be too bad. Now, I have so, uh, software installed on my server and I'm going to use that. Um, and I'm going to install KeyPass and Chrome, uh, or just, I probably might just install KeyPass and that's it. Um, I'll just see if I can find it because I think I'll put it in here. Just see if I have it. Okay, I do not have it. That's fine. I'm going to need to install a browser. So, well, in, because I don't have that, um, we're going to need to go ahead and uh, I've got software installed on here that we can use. So, I'm just going to see if there's anything that will work. Um, We'll go into 17. Okay, let's install Arduino because, well, why not for the heck for it? Um, once we've installed that, we'll publish it and then we'll be done and we can use that through a remote connection. Okay, so as you guys can see here now, the Arduino software is installed. The next thing that we're going to need to do now is publish this app. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to click Publish Remote App Programs. Now it's going to retrieve all the programs that are on this server and including Arduino. Now, because this is an x86 program, so that means 32-bit, um, I believe, uh, as I thought, it would not come up. So we need to manually specify its path. So we need to go into Program Files, Arduino, and then it should be there. And as you can see, we've added the program. Next, Publish. And in just a minute, that will be published. As you can see, please wait. Uh, the remote app programs that you selected are being published to the collection. Um, and that's how uh, you will publish an app. So I'm just going to do one now because um, I've just had some issues there with uh, programs that are on my server. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go and refresh this page. And as you can see, the Arduino is there. I'm going to click OK. And then finally connect, log in with my domain credentials. In my case, it's home slash mlandon. And then once I've logged in, I should have full remote access to that server. Now there are some hiccups that you might need to sort out and that's just simple enough to research it on Google um, because unfortunately I'm not an, uh, I wish as much as I wish I could uh, have those issues it's kind of a little bit 
um, too tricky to set that up in an environment. But as long as you follow my tutorial, it should be absolutely fine. As you can see, home slash M Landon, and it's going to now apply the user settings, um, your drive maps and things like that. Now it's preferring windows. Now you won't actually see this. It will look like this realistically, um, but this is just how um, domain users would log onto the server. So now that we actually are connected to Arduino, um, it's now going to start the program. And then finally, I will have this as a remote app. And as you can see, can you see how this is different? This is a Windows 8. And as you can see, that's a Windows 10. So it's completely different to what uh, my desktop looks like. And as you can see here as well, I've got this little icon here. This is indicating that I'm connected to a remote app. Anyway, guys, that's how you set one up. Thank you for very, very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. A like and a subscription would be kindly appreciated. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.